Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Hi, John. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, Okay, I'm going to make you co-host so you can let people in, okay? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. One second, let me choose the virtual background. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Done? Yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah, you can put whatever background you want. If you want to do a different one, that's fine. Because I got that one because maybe it's boring. You know what I mean? No, no, it's okay. It's fine. It's okay? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, your co-host. So that means you can let people in. Your co-host. Okay, thank you. Mm, Doug, I have an option to share my screen. Let me just once share my screen. Okay. I'll be able to see everything. Okay, I'll share my screen. Uh, desktop. Share. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, so you can see the desktop, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a second. So now you are seeing, right, my presentation? No, yes. No. Okay, great. No. Thank you. Stop share. How are you doing, Myla? I'm good, Dr. John. How are you? Good. Okay. Now, Giza has spent a lot of time putting this together. Yes, that's amazing. We, we, said we had some obstacles, but as I told Nargiza, the train is on the way. Either get on or get off. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nargiza? that's true. Right, Nargiza? Yes, of course. <laughs> you just agree with that thing, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, probably I have to agree. One second, I'm little. I know, I know. You concentrate. Yeah. I hate it when people talk to me when I'm concentrating. Uh, can you, John? Can you send the email link to Ipe, please, Professor Ipe? John. Yeah. Could you please? Yeah, sure. Or maybe I can also do that. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to put the link in the chat. No, he asked from uh, to send it to his email. Yeah, uh, I'm putting it in the chat anyways. Okay, uh, but why doesn't it do here? Hmm. To give it to someone if they can't get in. Hmm. And that's the link I sent to Ipe. It's a direct link. You don't have to register. I don't believe. Dr. John, I missed the Russian webinar this morning, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. What, it was morning over here in Turkey, it would be around uh, 6 or so, early, early. Yeah, in Russia, it was at 7.30. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't understand the timing, so that's why I missed it. Okay. I didn't get a chance to watch it. I, I just put it on and let it, it was, it was in Russian, so. Yes. Hopefully next time I'll catch it. I wasn't participating, so here, let, oh, me do, let me do some things here. And you could admit people. Uh, you should. You could do that, Myla. I'm going to put you on the panel too. All and right. I would appreciate if you admit people. You got to sure. stay on top of it. Uh, it's no big, not a big deal, but it's nice to have the option for you to do that. All right. You know how to do that, right? Yes. When people like raise their uh, hand. Yeah. yeah, some people don't want to come in. They'll still refuse it. So don't bother them. All I right. Tend, I tend to bother them. 
like I asked her three or four times, you want to come in? No, no, no. I see. Yeah, I'm I'm very glad to be able to send the Sufian off the other shows to show that we're participating and that we're doing things in other channels. And that's a di uh, yeah. We'll talk about your plans later, Milo. All yeah. right. I'm actually working on an abstract, like I told you, right? My cycle changed. So it has to be 15 to 20 pages and it's due Wednesday, but I have to show it on, on Monday. So one of the reasons why I missed the lecture this morning. Did you say uh, you have a cycle change? <laughs> yeah. It you was like- Your mind, your cycle change? Not no. cycle, John. Like a cycle change <laughs> of the uh, subjects. Like He's in kidding. Your... <laughs> I'm just stressing the words a little bit. Well, it, I have to write like 15 to 20 pages. It's quite a lot. I'll tell you, things are going really good. Uh, Brazil, we have a dynamite webcast tomorrow night. And it's always good in Brazil because... Uh, uh, Borba and his crew of Brazilian neurosurgeons, they're the best. They have like five or six neurosurgeons that participate in a very interchange of interactive way. I mean, for a student or resident to watch those guys at work, wow. Oh, I see. But, but you obviously can't attend to everything. You guys are busy. So no. just pick, pick your stuff that you like. Yeah. I wish the Russian one could have been like at a more suitable time, but it's okay. I'll get the hang of it one day. Uh, yeah, it's good uh, to learn it. Let's learn it. You're you're learning in the trenches, you know. You're learning the basics, and and uh, uh, it's good to learn that, even if it's just a couple of people. Although I've been very encouraged by the turnouts, even during the week. So that's excellent. Yeah. Oh, let me see. I got uh, I got a Facebook. I got a Facebook. Facebook, Facebook.
somebody sleeping and not letting the people in. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you need your. You know, we need to see your see your face, uh, my my love. Right. And if you don't mind, I would like you to say keep your camera on the whole time. All right. Uh, it shows you're paying attention. Okay, uh, we're here. And I really don't want to. I don't. Want, I really don't want to imply that you're not really watching it and you're doing. <laughs> I, I know what it's like. I'm the same way, you know, believe me. But I think it's a good thing uh, early in the channel's development that you keep your face on the screen and don't go in the background like you're not participating. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because we got to show that, you know, we care and we're listening <laughs> at least. Yeah, that's true. Hello, Dr. Rasan. Good morning from Libya. Hello. Good evening. How, how are things in Libya? Uh, it's evening here. Oh, it's evening there, right? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. Mila, right? Mila. Mila. Good morning. Dr. Rafi yeah. Vladimirovich, are you here? Good morning. Good yes, I'm, I'm here. Uh, good good morning. evening. In Moscow in our evening. Welcome. 6 p.m. in Moscow. Okay. Dr. Alexei Dimertsev is also here. Good evening. Uh, hello. Uh -huh. Hello, Alexei. Nice to meet you. Nice to oh, meet you. get my face on camera. Man, that's rude. Here I am speaking of decorum and behavior. I can't even do it myself. Going to change the screen there. Okay, since you're the host, uh, Nargiza, I'll introduce you, okay? Yes, and uh, uh, Andrei Vladimirovich, Dr. Andrei will introduce me as well, so it's fine. Yes, yes, Nargiza. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, turn it uh, One second, I'll just tell to Professor Ripe to come. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we start? I'm so glad you guys are participating from Russia. Uh, we've tried for a long time to kind of get a channel going. Uh, and I think with the help of Narita and Mila, we'll be able to do it effectively. Hopefully, inshallah. Yeah, myself, it was too much. I couldn't do it. Uh, and of course, we're always welcoming Dr. Sufinov. Uh, he did a webcast last night. Um, I don't know, Alexi, are you with uh, Tyerman? Sorry, are you in Ty Are you in now? No, Alexi is from Moscow. Oh, yes. okay. Okay, who is anybody from Novosibirsk? Novosibirsk. Yes, Agadash uh, will be from Novosibirsk. Oh, okay. I think he's already attended and connected. Okay. So, Rasim uh, Agaev is from Novosibirsk. He's living here. Oh, okay. He's five. coming in, right? I, I'm admitting him. Make him as a. Just a now second. in Novosibirsk, 10 p.m. Okay. I can be a panelist, so I'm in. making him a panelist. Okay. Very remote political type imagination. No problem. 
Uh, we are waiting for Professor Rai, but he will be joining. Okay. She said okay. that he's coming. Yeah, we'll wait. Is, we'll wait. We'll wait a minute ah, or two. Okay, fine. Is he, is he one of the first speakers? No, I am the first speaker today. Oh, okay. So we have a little time. Uh, Professor Ip is here. I just promoted him to the oh, panel. Okay. Great, great. Thank you. Yeah, he's here. Okay. <laughs> There's I. Hey. How are you doing? Hey, guys. Hi, Dr. Ike. Hi. Hey, good to see you. Hi. Hello. Hey, Hello. Good love. Andre, good to see you, buddy. Yes. Hello, <laughs> Ike. <laughs> How are you all? It's been a while. <laughs> I know. Uh, John. <laughs> So Your we, voice we, is breaking. We were trying to get the Russian thing going for a while. Way back, you were trying. To, we were, remember, we were trying to get Dr. Sufinov to come on and doing webinars and stuff. Your, your microphone is not working, right? Or something. Oh, Valerie wants to come in, right? Dr. Kasimov. Uh, I'm unable to uh, make her a panelist. I don't know why. Yeah, some, well, sometimes they receive that notice and they don't know what to do. It's ask them if they want to come in. And for some reason, they don't want to come in. Yeah, yeah it's because I've tried to, like, send her the request. Valerie, we're it's waiting for Valerie, right? Okay, Valerie. Oh. The panelist or remote? You, you, Valerie is raising his hand. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I tried to promote, but I can't. I don't know why. Well, she's getting a notice that set, and she's probably confused by the notice. I don't know if she's done a webcast. Oh, here, big. See, she declined to be promoted. No, no, it's not she. It's she, he. Uh, Valeri Limutov is that boy. It is uh, my resident. Okay, but oh, can you tell her like, on the phone or something to uh, to? Because uh, I've already tried admitting him like two, three times, but he won't refuse. Can... She refuses to be admitted. So she when do you to... want to start, guys? When do you want me to start? Uh, I, will start with said, I will be starting uh, in one minute. I'll talk about pioneer origin anatomy, and then uh, you will carry on. Okay. 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 Thank you. I'll, I'll be okay. here. I'll be. Yes. Yes. Done. Done. Okay. Very good. Okay. Let's start. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good morning from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. We have the honor of hosting the Neuro uh, Russian Neurosurgery Grand Rounds. Uh, it's being led by Nargiza Sartova, a resident, no, excuse me, a neurosurgeon from Uzbekistan that's going to not only moderate, she's going to present. Welcome, Nargiva. Uh, uh, yes. May yes. I uh, introduce Nargiza? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go yes. ahead. I would like to present to your attention uh, Dr. Nargiza Satova. She is neurosurgeon, international fellow in pediatric neurosurgery in Istanbul now. Uh, uh, she was born in Tashkent in Uzbekistan. Uh, today, uh, she's topic is spinal region anatomy. Please, Nargiza. Thank you so much uh, for kind uh, introduction. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Are you able to see my screen right now? Yeah, yes. Yeah, not... yeah. So yeah, perfect, today, we, uh -huh. today we will be talking about the pineal region mostly. 
and I want to put your attention on pineal region anatomy. Uh, pineal region anatomy was uh, considered by French philosopher in 16th century René de Crates as a seat of the soul. So the creators thought that there was an uh, interaction between the soul and the body. And there were a couple prevailing ideas about where the interaction took place. And it is uh, in no way in the heart nor in the whole brain, but in the deepest parts uh, with certain very small gland, which is situated in the middle of the substance. Um, one second. Okay, the pineal region or epithalamus occupies the caudal roof of the diencephalon. The pineal region located above the dactyl plate, quadrigeminal plate, uh, in close relationship with the posterior incisural space, suprotentorial uh, ventricles, basal cisterns, deep venous system, distal posterior arteries. Uh, since it is directly related with the posterior aspect of the third ventricle, uh, with which it shares natural anatomic corridor. The thorough and meticulous knowledge of this relationship remains crucial to perform some selected surgical routes to approach this area. Uh, the surgical approaches of the pineal body, uh, pineal body creates the great challenge uh, for neurosurgeons due to its location in the deep part of the brain, its close relationship with surrounded vascular structures. Uh, let's start talking about posterior incisural space. We know that we have anterior, middle and posterior incisural space in our brain. Posterior incisural space lies posterior to the midbrain and corresponds to the pineal region. So um, as every space, it has roof, uh, which is formed by the lower surface of the splenium of the corpus callosum, the terminal part of the crura of the fornitus and the hippocampal commissure. Uh, the floor is formed by the anterior superior part of the cerebellum uh, and consists of the culmen of the vermis and the midline uh, and the quadriangle lobulus of the hemispheres laterally. The anterior wall of the posterior incisural space rostral to the calliculi is formed by the pineal body and each lateral wall is formed by the pulvinar of the thalamus cruise of the fornix and the medial surface of the cerebellar hemisphere and extends backward uh, to the level of the tentorial apex. So here in the picture you can appreciate the posterior uh, incisural space. Posterior incisural space, uh, the size of the tentorial notch is variable, therefore the distance between the posterior boundaries of the tentorial notch and the pineal body could range up to from 10 to 30 millimeter. So why do we need to know this? Uh, this variation of distance could influence the choice whether or not to perform the tentorial incision during the surgical axis of the region. Um, the second important structure of the pineal region is the most important, I would say, the pineal gland. Um, it is situated under the splenion of the corpus callosum between the pulvinar of the bos thalamus. Uh, the gland lies directly over the upper part of the tectum between two superior colliculi on the cruciform groove. Uh, the upper part of the pineal glide is in continuity with the habenular, which containing little habenular nucleus, also called anterior peduncle, uh, of the brain epiphysis and its lower part is in continuity with the posterior commissure. So uh, the pineal stem is uh, continuous with the habenular commissure dorsally and the posterior commissure ventrally. So more cranially, the pineal gland is located in relation uh, to the two recesses of the third ventricle. Uh, another important structure, the quadrigeminal system. This is the major system of the posterior incisural space. So the quadrigeminal system is located behind the pineal gland and the colliculi between the pulvinars. It extends into the cerebellar mesencephalic fissure. The trochlear nose comes below the inferior colliculi. Quadrigeminal system uh, communicates above with posterior pericolosal system inferiorly uh, into the uh, it comes into cerebellar mesencephalic fissure inferiorly inferolaterally into the posterior part of the ambient system located between the midbrain and the parahippocampal gyrus 
laterally into the retrothalamic areas, medial uh, where the cross of fornix wraps the posterior part of the pulvinar. The quadrigeminal system may communicate with vellum interpositum, uh, which is the space uh, that extends forward into the roof of the third ventricle between the splenium of corpus callosum above and the pineal body below. Again, the exact knowledge of the organization of arachnoid cyst in the pineal region is mandatory and important as for posterior microsurgical approaches of the pineal region. And it is necessary to be carefully dissect these meningeal sheets that code the vascular uh, structures. Posterior third ventricle, the embryological residue uh, of the deencephalon dorsal evagination constitutes the pineal recess, which is continuity with the posterior part of the third ventricle. So the close relationship allows the opportunity to access to the anterior pineal region using the endoscopic techniques via the third ventricle. Hmm. Uh, we are moving to ventricle relationship. So posterior portion of the third ventricle and the cerebral aqueduct are anterior and the atria of uh, the occipital horn of the lateral ventricle are the lateral to the posterior incisural space. Uh, ventricle relationship of epiphysis in the upper aperture of cerebral aqueduct situated just in front of the posterior commissure and may compress by the pineal uh, tumor anterior extension, uh, create interventricular hydrocephalus. Uh, venous relationship of this area of the brain is the most complex venous relationship in the cranium because the internal cerebral vein, basal vein of Rosenthal and many other, their tributaries converge uh, on the vein of Gelling within this area. So uh, what we have to know in this area, we have to know internal cerebral vein, which is course posteriorly along the roof of the third ventricle and uh, later on joining to the vein of Galen, a basal vein of Rosenthal, which is originating uh, in the anterior perforated space. It also goes uh, laterally and uh, backward. Uh, again, joining and ending internal cerebral vein or uh, sometimes the great veins. Uh, the vein of Galen, which originates in the suprapineal recess by the junction of both internal cerebral veins, extends posterior superior below the splenium and uh, reaches the straight sinus at the tentorial apex. And the uh, straight sinus comes from the junction of the inferior sagittal sinus and the vein of Galen and continues posterior inferiorly following the uh, falcotentorial line to reach the torculum. So the largest vein, also one important fact that the largest vein from the inferior tentorial part of the posterior incisural space, the vein of the cerebellum mesencephalic fissure, it originates from the union of the paired veins of the superior uh, cerebellar peduncle. Deep venous system uh, the lesions in the posterior incisural space include pineal tumors, meningiomas, gliomas, arteriovenous malformation, which are involving the medial occipital bone of upper cerebellum. So given the narrowness of posterior incisural space, the posterior segment of the basal vein can be obstructed during the surgical procedures. Venous infarction or venous edema of the bones, midbrain and deencephalon may occur during surgery along with venous damage. Uh, these are the tributaries. So I'm not going to uh, talk much about them. Just uh, want to mention that galenic draining vein groups of the posterior fossa draining the tentorial surface of the cerebellum, part of the roof of the first ventricle, the cerebellum mesencephalic fissure, and midbrain. So here you can see the medial and lateral atrial veins, epithalamic pineal veins, internal occipital veins, thalamic veins, uh, posterior pericolosal veins, longitudinal most posterior medial temporal veins, medial occipital temporal veins as well. Um, in conclusion, we have to say that close relationship inside the quadrigeminal system could facilitate adgesion uh, between the aggressive tumors and the veins presenting difficulties for the dissection. 
However, most of the veins have to be completely preserved during the removal of pineal region tumor to avoid uh, major surgical complication, including thalamic venous infarction. In the tumor, uh, if the tumor is large and wide, the surgical space is necessary to remove it. The only precentral cerebral vein or the superior cerebral vein on one side can eventually be uh, sometimes sacrificed among the veins of the galenic draining system. These are arterial relationship and the most important arteries are posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. So uh, posterior cerebral arteries supply the structures above the level of the lower margin of the superior colliculi and superior cerebellar artery supply the structures below the upper margin of the inferior colliculi. So you can see here the branches, uh, medial posterior choroidal artery, lateral posterior choroidal artery, what are they supply? And uh, also we have to say the superior cerebellar artery is coursing within the cerebellar mesencephalic fissure when it reaches the posterior incisural space. Uh, this is the study from China uh, where they trying to compare basal vein of uh, Rosenthal and based on scatter plots of the entrance of the basal vein into the posterior intersural space, the distribution of the entrance of the basal vein was found to be clustered along the medial segment of the vein of the gallon, initial segment of the vein of gallon, and the end of the internal cerebral vein. So when the basal vein entered to the medial segment of the vein of Galen, the gap between the basal veins and the ipsilateral internal cerebral vein is relatively large. When the basal vein entered the end of the internal cerebral vein, on the other hand, the gap, uh, the gap between the basal vein and the ipsilateral Galen's vein was relatively large. And when the basal vein enters the initial part of the uh, vein of Galen, uh, the gap between the basal vein of uh, and the, each of the ipsilateral intercerebral uh, vein of the gallons vein were relatively small. Um, so this is another paper uh, which shows the comparison of posterior approaches to the posterior intersural space. Microsurgical anatomy proposal for a new method, occipital B transtentorial falcine, uh, falcine approach. So the purpose of this study were to compare the surgical views in the various posterior approach to the posterior intersural space. And in this study, a variety of posterior approaches to the pineal region were investigated to identify the difference in uh, intraoperative view, a new approach, namely occipital B transtentorial uh, falcine approach was introduced. So here you can see the um, red, orange, green, and blue uh, marks where uh, the representation of uh, quadrigeminal plate comparing the domains of the exposure associated with the posterior approaches to the posterior intersural space. Uh, actually, they are showing what is the best uh, approach should we choose in order to get the better view intraoperatively. Um, and in conclusion, I would like to say that one of the most important factors for achieving successful surgery uh, and patient outcome in the pineal region is the good knowledge of the regional anatomy. Whatever the route and the technique used for approaching the pineal body, microsurgical, endoscopic, it has to take into account the complex anatomical surrounding of this region that moreover could be modified by expensive lesions. Uh, this point is obviously crucial as none of the surrounding structures, especially the venous complex, can be easily sacrificed uh, to uh, access the pineal, uh, cannot be easily sacrificed to access the pineal region. So meticulous anatomical review apart from MRI and if it is required DSA, um, CT venogram, uh, venogram uh, before uh, the surgery gives important information for surgical planning and significant uh, help intraoperatively. So these are the books and the articles I was using uh, while preparing my presentation. And let my thank for your attention be somewhere in the corner. I just want to share this uh, 
picture and uh, to show the giants in neurosurgery. Uh, this is the WFNS Neuroanatomy Committed. I'm very glad that I know these people personally and these are the neurosurgeons uh, who will teach you exact anatomy and uh, thank you for your attention. I am ready to answer your questions. Okay, Andre, you want to moderate if there are any questions? Uh, thank you, thank you, Nargiza. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge about the anatomy of the uh, such a region, uh, such complex region as uh, pineal region. Uh, maybe uh, uh, questions from listeners, from auditory. I just have a comment. Thank you so much, Dr. Nargiza. It was really informative. Thank you so much. Okay, no questions. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank. Thanks. Um, so I think we would move to next our presenter, my good friend, uh, Doctor Ayb Cherian. He's neurosurgeon. Now he's director of Neurosciences Institute uh, in Karat uh, city in India. Uh, the topic of his report is supracerebellar approach to pineal gland. Please, Aip. Uh, thank you, my very good uh, friend, uh, Andre. I'm very proud of Nargiza, the way she's presented. Uh, I can see that she's really come of age and uh, I'm very proud of how she's presented the anatomy makes my job much easier actually. Mm -hmm. So I will show you a case whether we've gone and uh, taken out the uh, velum interpositum meningioma. So uh, the anatomy you will see very well right now. I'm just sharing my screen. So I hope you can see my screen. Not yet. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We, we can see. We see your screen, yes, now. Yeah, so this is a tumor that uh, is actually in the posterior third ventricle. Uh, it is not in the pineal region. The pineal region would be a little bit more posterior. This is actually posterior third ventricle. So you can see how this tumor is. You can see the, uh, now you can see how it's splitting the, uh, the thalamo midbrain junction in the two, and uh, you can see this is the lesion. Now, the best approach for this is obviously supracerebellar, but the only problem you have to see is you see the curve of this tent. This curve of the tent is going to take you right here, the confluence of the veins. You can see the internal cerebral veins, the, the internal cerebral veins um, coming out there at the roof of the third ventricle, that, that one, the vein of gallon uh, coming into the straight sinus there, the pre-central cerebral vein, cerebellar vein coming there. So you can see the internal cerebral, you can see the vein of gallon, all these things Nargiza was showing you and the straight sinus going on there. And that's a pre-central cerebellar vein, okay? So, and this is the curve. So we decided uh, in these kind of cases, what we do is we do a small craniotomy up and down. And then after that, we take, uh, we take stitches at the base of the tent and then take the, take the tent up along with the sinus so that we get some space like that. And uh, this is exactly what we did. So there are superficial veins which you can take. This will allow you to uh, get the cerebellum to fall.
And once you do that, then you can take your stitches. And uh, so you can see these stitches now. These stitches are to the underside of the tent. And these stitches allow you valuable space. It's very important. And it's also very important that you don't go to the midline because uh, obviously you will uh, interrupt the straight sinus uh, there coming into the torcula. So you don't want to do that. So you're just taking stitches like that and just elevating the, the sinus now. So you must be very careful that you should not be trying to, if this maneuver, instead of this maneuver, some people try to decrease, I mean, to uh, put a retractor on the cerebellum and try to get it into the space that's very counterproductive. So you should very gently and very carefully keep on elevating this space up and then slowly you get into the, uh, the posterior incisional space as uh, um, Nargiza was telling you. So the posterior incisional space, you will see the, the both the pulvinars on both sides and uh, the pineal. I don't about the pineal. So you can see that's the incisura. That's a posterior incisural space. You will see the posterior cerebral artery and the medial, uh, medial posterior choroid artery. So you have to be very careful about dissecting this arachnoid. And this arachnoid we saw, it is over the vein of gallon and the internal cerebral vein acutely turning into the vein of gallon. You saw the anatomy there. And uh, you, see, you can see that there is thick arachnoid over this. There's a posterior incisional space is being outlined. You can see the basal vein of uh, Rosenthal and the internal cerebral vein joining from both sides. The posterior, uh, I mean, the internal cerebral vein, the basal vein of Rosenthal, and you can see the middle posterior choroid artery from the PCA. Now you are going to cut. Uh, this arachnoid and see the vein of uh, gallon going into the straight side. So, got to be very careful. So, here under high magnification, we're going to cut. So, I use a diamond knife here to cut this very thick arachnoid. Generally, it is not so thick. So you can see the pulvinar on this side, the pulvinar on that, that side, and this thick arachnoid, once it's opened, it uh, gives me weight to the posterior third bend. Now you can see the vein. You see how thick it is. So the posterior, posterior incisional space is beautifully outlined. Both the internal cerebral and the, uh, the basal vein of Rosenthal and the vein of gallon joining the straight sinus uh, is outlined. Now you have to outline the precentral cerebellar vein, which is joining. The internal occipital veins are also seen. So you have to outline the precentral cerebellar vein. So first you open this arachnoid completely to outline the rest of the veins. This is precisely what I'm going to do. And now I'm using the endoscope. And you can see the vein of gallon there going up. Then you can see the pineal region there. This is the entry to the third ventricle. And obviously, you would see the precentral cerebellar vein there. And that is blocking your entrance to the third ventricle. So you can go and uh, sacrifice it. I, uh, this is uh, one of the veins I take routinely when I am doing a uh, tumor of the uh, posterior third ventricle. So if I have to enter the posterior third ventricle, this, so that's the vein that I am 
by blurring now in the end of You can see the PCA and uh, the arteries to the cerebellar vermis, the artery to that. So that's the vein, that, that vein is the present cerebellar vein. So I'm going to cut it so that you can see the present cerebellar vein there. I'm going to cut it and that gives me access to the tube and the posterior third ventricle. So after Nargiza has shown the anatomy, I'm sure it's easier for you. So the two pulvinas, and I'm entering into the posterior third ventricle there, and I'm outlining the tumor. That's the PCA and the medial posterior choroidal artery. So I find that this tumor is very rubbery. Uh, I cannot, uh, I mean, we tried the CUSA, not working. So with the bipolar, I'm trying to uh, fulgurate. So see those are, see that artery. So I've got to be very careful with that artery. So I'm trying to separate this tumor, very, very rubbery. So we tried the CUSA, not really working. So I'm trying to harden it. This is one of my techniques. I, I fragmented my bipolar and tried to harden it. Not really working, but I'm able to mobilize this tumor from the third ventricular floor. So this is precisely what I'm doing now. So with the dissector, I try to mobilize this tumor. Again, you have to be very careful about the force that you use. You must know how much force that you can use. So uh, beyond that reasonable force, then if you use more force, then it's a problem. Now I'm going to do something that you're going to have your hearts in your mouth. I'm going to put something that you probably will not like, or uh, this is a debrider that see. This is a debrider which we use for ENT because mucosa removal. And I found I find that this is a fantastic tool in many cases. And here, <laughs> because you have the PCA and uh, all the arteries, and you have the hypothalamus and the thalamus and the third ventricular floor, and uh, of course the internal cerebral veins on top. That is the the tila. About that is the internal cerebral range. You've got to be very, very careful. So the tumor is attached there. We see that the tumor is attached there. So you can see it clearing now. That's a third ventricle in front. So I am seeing that it is attached to the tila, keeping on removing tumor. Almost all the tumor removed. Only the tough uh, TLR uh, capsule re remains. Of course, I don't want to go into that because we have the internal several veins there and uh, um, the debrider is not something you want to put very close to a vein. Now, hemostasis there. The entire tumor is cleared. Hemostasis. You don't want to put large surgery cells there. So this is the result. So tumor completely removed. Hema is a glomerular velum uh, inter interpositor meningioma. So that is how I'm using the endos endoscope and this is how I'm using the microscope. These days we use the exoscope, by the way. This was a petrol I had a few years back. Thank you very much. I'll stop sharing. If uh, I hope uh, I made the anatomy a little bit more clearer after Nargiza has uh, explained the anatomy. Thank you very much, guys.
Thank you, Ipe. Thank you for your brilliant presentation. Uh, I have one question for you. Uh, do you have uh, to cut the top of vermis if the tumor extends uh, caudally or not? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I have, in my surgical experience, many times I've had to remove a little bit of the vermis if the tumor is extending too much. Uh, this I these days what I use is I use a thirty degree or a, sometimes even a seventy degree scope. So um, I I have stopped removing the vermis now because I use a thirty degree scope and uh, debriders to get into that space if that if that it is there. It helps you. But, uh, yes, it I helps. helps. You. Yeah, it yeah. helps. But uh, earlier, yes, I used to remove the top of the vermis and. Uh, this is a very good. Uh, uh, this is a very good way to go ahead. Okay, okay, I understand you. And could there be complications from cutting the cutting the top of vermis, the top of vermis? Beg your pardon. Uh, could there be complications after the cutting of the top top of in vermis? My, in my experience, in your experience, no. In, in my no. experience, okay. no, no ataxia. Uh, not at all. I mean, if you take a little bit of the vermis on top, uh, you really don't have any um, uh, practical, I mean, some something that really manifests, no. No problems. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, another I remember question. Andre being with us in uh, Nepal. He was yeah. a very brilliant surgeon. Um, thank you so much. Also, yeah, and also... Uh, one of uh, your colleagues, uh, um, I, his name is Sergi, I think. Sergei Chernov. Yes. Uh -huh. Sergei Chernov. Yes. Sergei yes. Chernov. He was also a brilliant yes. surgeon. He was with us for yes. about a year. He, he yeah. now lives and works in Novosibirsk in another yes. clinic. Chernov is my friend too. He's a great surgeon. I'm glad to yes. hear yes. about him. <laughs> really great surgeon, yes. Excuse me, I like to say a remark. You know, I has been a friend of Russian neurosurgery for a long time. We've we've done webcasts way back, I around five years ago with Dr. Suvinov. And I think yes, we're yes, finally, yes. We're finally getting through. Okay. I am uh, I am in Siberia in uh, December this year with Sufiano. So we are doing an exoscope only meeting. And um, I hope to see you guys there. Yes, okay. thank you very much, Professor, one more time for the presentation and for the knowledge and the time you spare for us. And I just wanted to tell that uh, Professor Ive is my mentor over the last two and a half years, maybe almost three years. And uh, the most important thing which Professor says is that if you know the anatomy and if you go into deep details, you don't need navigation, you don't need some additional stuff. So try to create the map of neuroanatomy in your brain and you will be safe and uh, that will give the best outcomes for your patients. So thank you, Professor. I have a question. Do you yes, yes. Hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Do, you, do you use uh, always uh, red fractals? when you surgery final regions no i never use the retractor as a retractor it is just uh, to guard to just to uh, guard the top of the cerebellum i i don't put the retractor as such um, i i keep on releasing all the adhesions all the arachnoid from the top of the cerebellum and if there are any bridging veins uh, uh, towards me, I can take it out. But the retractor is there. If you see in the video, the retractor is not connected to anything. It is just staying there. I, uh, I have a question. Uh, do you every time use a sitting position of patient? Yes, yes. In this case, uh, in these cases, I love the sitting position, especially with the exoscope. It is fantastic for the sitting position. Earlier, even okay. when the microscope had, I had my own position. Um, I mean, I, I never used to operate uh, like a lot of surgeons with a lot of stress. So I used to have a sitting position where um, I adjusted the table and my hand rest and my endoscope. If you see the last 
portion of the video, I show my way of how I operate, not without, not with any stress. It's uh, my hands are very close, and uh, uh, I when I used to when I need to use the endoscope, I use the endoscope. That is also uh, very very helpful in this kind of case. You saw uh, many cases, many parts of the video. You can see that how I use the endoscope. These days, I use both together, endoscope and exoscope together. Okay, we have one question one from a uh, participant. Uh, Derib, have you used a lumbar drain during pineal region tumors? Yes, yes, very, very important uh, because uh, if the cerebellum is tight and uh, uh, if the cerebellum doesn't uh, descend down, is a problem. So I keep the lumbar drain, but I do not open it till I open the dura. I I ask them. If I have in if I am in trouble and the cerebellum is not going down, I ask them to open the lumbar drain, drain about 20-25 ml of uh, CSF, and the cerebellum slowly starts shifting down. But keeping a lumbar drain is very very important. And after the surgery, as soon as the surgery is over, I ask them to take it out. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, professor. Thank you. Nargiza, you introduce yes. next. Mm -hmm. I would like to introduce our next speaker uh, from Pirogov team, uh, Dr. Alexey Dimirtsev, uh, medical doctor and consultant neurosurgeon and head of the academic department of neurosurgical department of National Medical and Surgical Center, named after Pirogov. And uh, he is uh, the head of the department, Dr. Andrei Zuyev. He is assistant professor, PhD, also from uh, Pirogov Center. And today, uh, Dr. Alexey Dimirtsov will be talking about the surgery of pineal region tumors. Thank you. Hello, dear colleagues. Uh, glad to see you again. Uh, John asked us uh, to show one video from our case records. Uh, it is uh, young. Uh, Woman with uh, hypertension syndrome uh, with uh, headaches, and uh, when uh, she did MRI, we find a round shaped tumor uh, with extension to the third ventricle. Uh, okay. uh, we use right sided pyramid and super cerebellar approach to reach this region. And uh, it is a step by step surgery. The patient was in a semi sitting position, uh, cutting the skin, high ski. Uh, we use a high speed drill to remove the bone. Uh, we uh, like uh, this type of craniotomy uh, to reach this region. After elevation of uh, bone left, we uh, see uh, the torcula, superior sagittal uh, sinus, and transverse sinus as well. Uh, hemostasis. And uh, we use uh, occipital form drainage uh, to draw down uh, the cerebellar. And now we try to open the system. We see the print central cerebral vein. It is a right-sided approach. Now we see the tumor. Uh, basal vein and tumoral. Uh, when we find this tumor, we uh, talking with the colleagues uh, to um, optimal tactic for treatment this patient. So many surgeons uh, write about uh, final region uh, cyst and uh, use uh, many techniques to treat uh, these patients. So somebody uh, use ventriculoscopy only. Somebody uh, use uh, wash and wait without any surgery because uh, this uh, cyst uh, never grows up on his hand. And uh, somebody use microsurgical resection. Uh, Now we try to remove uh, sized wall. 
if we see the proven of uh, the left side, we try to find uh, the section field. And uh, we try to find the section field on the right side. And uh, in uh, our department, uh, we uh, see sometimes the patients with uh, fine knowledge on size. And uh, we talk about surgery and about uh, results of this surgery with the patient. And uh, if the patient uh, ask uh, us to remove the, this uh, tumor, we try to use uh, conservative treatment firstly. And uh, if the patient have uh, headaches, have hypertension syndrome, uh, without any effectiveness of uh, conservative treatment, we uh, choose uh, ventricular stomy if possible. And now we see the section field. Plate. And uh, her ventricle. <clears throat> A part of tumor was removed. You see her ventricle, anterior parts of tumor. And uh, if uh, ventricular stomy is not possible with a small rope around them, we use a microsurgical resection. Now, the section field finding. And uh, uh, this situation about this patient, uh, this patient uh, with the Hansen syndrome, uh, with the typical uh, MRI signs of uh, pineal legion cyst, and uh, after remove uh, our pathohistologic uh, say that it was ependymoma. Uh, it is about uh, teamwork, about collaboration. Uh, we ask our histologist. Uh, how to happen, and uh, he say, can you uh, get the material to the next uh, specialized, and we send this uh, material to Bordenko Hospital, to his laboratory, and uh, they answer that it, it was a uh, on the cyst uh, without any uh, dimmer uh, signs. Now we see right sided pulmonar. And uh, dissection field, find it. And uh, setups. Okay, I I finished my demonstration, but I uh, can show you a few patients with. Um, mm, different types of the pineal region tumors and uh, our tactic uh, for treatment. Second place. 
And uh, <coughs> did you see uh, MRI now or not? Alkiza, can you help me? Not, not yet, not yet. We are not able to oh, see. Sorry. See. I have a trouble with my Zoom. <laughs> One second, please. No problem. Can you ask me something um, uh, before I finish my uh, Zoom work? Yes, thank you very much for your presentation, for the nice case report. If any questions from the audience, uh, any comments? Oh. Thank no. you so much, Professor. No, I did. Uh, it yeah. was, um, uh, sorry, now you see my screen. No, we see your face. Oh, sorry for this. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That was my mistake. Hi. <laughs> uh, and now. Your screen. And now you see. Not yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And now. Hannah, yeah. we can see MRI. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finally. Uh, it was a young woman uh, who uh, uh, has a few uh, tries to shunt a placement before our surgery. Uh, I tried to show you this uh, uh, shunts. Okay, I uh, remove uh, this picture from uh, this presentation. Uh, Three shunt and uh, one of these uh, was placed into the tumor, second placed uh, into the midbrain, and uh, third uh, placed into uh, contour hemisphere. And uh, uh, no one uh, not working right. Uh, it was a big tumor with extension to the uh, lateral ventricle. Uh, it was huge, and uh, now we see the MRI with the contrasting. In your opinion, uh, what are you thinking about this tumor? What it was? Felix. So the question is, what was the tumor, right? According yes. to With uh, left meningeal extension. This after. No, 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 before surgery. Before. Yes. With the uh, contrasting like uh, this with a uh, left meningeal extension uh, to the mm, tentorium, to the midbrain. Mm -hmm. It's similar meningioma maybe, but... No, um, I know. without uh, any borders between uh, tumor and uh, brain. Some high grade... Uh, high grade glioma? High grade uh, tumor. It was pneumoblastoma. Uh, yes, we did the surgery and uh, removed uh, this tumor uh, transcortically uh, through uh, the lateral ventricle with uh, used uh, fibular retractor. retractor. Yes, and uh, we uh, did the surgery uh, not totally because uh, this tumor was with uh, uh, met leptomeningeal metastasis, but uh, this patient live uh, after surgery a uh, few years. Okay, and uh, 
one uh, more case. I try to find it. Uh huh. It is. One second, please. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you see? Yes, we are see. We can see. Uh. It was a round shaped tumor with uh, uh, clear borders between the tumor and brain uh, with the extension of the uh, root of the pineal region. And uh, how it was, uh, what type of tumor it was? What are you thinking about? It was. Uh... With cystic lesion, right? Uh, no, no, not cystic. Not cystic, cystic. Okay. No, cystic. with the uh, contrast uh, enhancement, homogeneous, uh, uh, round shaped, uh, without any borders, with the interior notch and uh, right, the straight sinus. That might be meningioma. No? Yes, uh, it was meningioma, and uh, to remove uh, this tumor, we used interhemispheric uh, occipital approach. We use uh, dynamic retraction without any uh, rigid uh, retractor. Uh, we find the tumor on the uh, central notch and uh, remove it uh, with the protection of sinus rectus and uh, cut uh, tentorium with the uh, uh, growing part of the tumor. Uh, find the vein of the end and remove the tumor uh, without any uh, cerebral, cere uh, deep uh, vein damage. Uh, we use this approach uh, few times we don't like it, but uh, several cases uh, need to use an uh, interhemispheric approach. Okay, now we go. Thank you. Thank you so much. In this case, uh, have you used, uh, how did you resolve the hydrocephalus? So did you put the shunt or uh, after? Yes, yes. Uh, I skipped this uh, picture with the uh, Shunting before surgery, uh, before duratomy, we use uh, uh, ventricle drainage with the uh, ultrasonography. And uh, 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 <clears throat> we get a brain relaxation of the size circle. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much for a uh, nice case report. It's mm -hmm. important, and I, I like uh, the the way you keep the discussion with questions. You know, it forces you to. Thank you so much. So, if any questions from the audience, uh... I have questions. Uh, well, what do you use about? Uh, uh, herbal or uh, uh, relaxing. Do you open uh, basal stern or you uh, use uh, ventricular drainage? Uh, always. Yes. Uh, Thank you for your question. Uh, it is not about uh, always, not about one way uh, of uh, our surgery. We use now a lumbar drainage and uh, our professor said uh, a few minutes ago, we uh, open it if it needs. Uh, firstly, we try to open basal system to size it, remove. And a uh, few times we use uh, uh, external uh, ventricular drainage uh, with the uh, ultrasonography navigation before uh, we did uh, the durotomy. Uh, okay. it, it is uh, combined in, uh, in uh, different situation, not uh, only one way. It depends on individual. Yes, yes. And uh, if we understand that uh, 
uh, one, one second uh, and uh, we damage uh, the uh, cerebrum. Of course, we open our lumbar drainage because it is uh, about uh, five minutes before surgery. I always uh, um, place the lumbar drainage when we uh, operate uh, posterior. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment, uh, Naritza. Uh, if anyone has a question and they don't like, uh, they'd rather ask it in Russian. That's no problem. Just ask in Russian, and someone on the panel will translate it. So yes, don't yes. Feel, don't feel hesitant because your English is not good. Just ask the question in Russian, and we'll translate it. Okay. Okay, Naritza, back yes, to you. Yes. If anyone has questions, definitely you are most welcome to ask in Russian as well or to type in Russian. No problem. We will translate uh, for our international colleagues. So but now I see that uh, in our chat, uh, somebody write uh, answer on my question. Sorry, sorry. I... No, it's come. Uh, yes, the people were giving suggestion. What is the uh, what type of tumor it is? Ependymoma, pineoloblastoma, or germinoma. So mm -hmm. I think the germinoma requires the different webinar. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yes, we never did the surgery of germinoma. Yes. So we can move to our uh, last uh, speaker for today, uh, Dr. Agata Dash Kasimov, medical doctor, uh, consultant neurosurgeon in Federal Neurosurgical Center, Novosibirsk. Uh, the today's topic is going to be olfactory subfrontal schwannoma case report and literature review. Dr. Agadadash, please. Uh, greeting, dear colleagues. I would to like to thank you the conference organization the opportunity to speak at this conference. Usually, I prefer to give more surgical presentation using my experience, but here I am presenting a clinical cases and a literature review. I think to that for many, it will be interesting, but uh, my name is Agadash Kasim. I, I am a neurosurgeon. I work in neurosurgical department in the Federal Neurosurgical Center. I'm trying to finish my speech early because everyone is probably tired already. Topic in my <clears throat> report, uh, olfactory subfrontal schwannoma, case report and uh, literature review. Uh, to begin with, uh, I want to give some revision of brain anatomy. As we, as we all know, there are uh, 12 cranial nerves, the olfactory nerve as the first cranial nerve. Uh, there are third cranial fossa, anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. Olfactory nerve is located in the anterior cranial fossa. Olfactory nerve is located in the medial parts of the anterior cranial fossa. The olfactory nerve is a cranial nerve that contains sensory nerve fibers uh, relating to the sense of the smell. It is sensory in nature in the origins, in the olfactory mucosa, in the upper part of the nasal cavity. From the olfactory mucosa, their nerve, actually many small nerve fasciculus, travels up to throw the cryoform plate of the ethmoid bone to reach the surface of the brain. Here, the fasciculus enters the olfactory bulb and the synapse there. From the bulb, the olfactory information is transmitted into the brain via the olfactory tract. The afferent nerve fibers on the olfactory receptor neurons transmit nerve impulse about doors uh, to the central nervous system, where there is persisted a smell olfaction. The fasciculus on the olfactory nerve are not visible on cadaver brain because they are severed upon removal. Uh, now let's move to schwannoma tumor. It, 
It most cases for normal are benign tumor and uh, relapse and the extremity rare after total rejection. Schwannoma arise from the melting cells on the cranial and the peripheral nervous system composed of the Schwann cells that normally produce myelin sheaths covered the nerve. Cranial nerve schwannoma accounts for the two. 8% uh, of the all primary brain tumors. Among intracranial schwannomas, vestibular schwannoma constitutes uh, 90%. Schwannomas are trigeminal, partial, and pharyngeal, and vagus nerve is much less common. Vestibular schwannoma is most common in the neurosurgical practice. This tumor grows the trans piece of the vestibular segments of the vestibular cochlear nerve. Most trigeminal, crossophangeal, and the vagus nerve is the most less common. Mostly, uh, schwannoma does not grow for the olfactory and optic nerve. Um, olfactory nerve schwannoma are extremely rare. Their origin is still unclear as olfactory nerve has no Schwann cells. About uh, 70 cases of olfactory nerve schwannoma have been described in the world literature. Uh, a patient came to us, uh, this is a clinical case. The patient came to us, a uh, male, 55 years old. He had complaints, headaches, and the progressive impairment of the smelling persisted for the previous two years. MRI revealed extracerebral tumors in the uh, anterior cranial fossa base, which the size of the 34, 35, 35 millimeters uh, with left-sided lateralization resembling olfactory groove meningioma. We are looking uh, at uh, preoperative -pre MRI images. We can see tumor Localize it in the left side. It doesn't have expressed peripheral edema. That isn't typical of such lesion. We are looking at the preoperative MRI images with contrast enhancement that the tumor is activity accumulation contrast agent. We assume that. Uh, it would be olfactory groove meningioma. We used the uh, left sided lateral supraorbital craniotomy. Uh, surgical aspects. After mobilization of basal parts of the left frontal lobe and the access to the left region of the olfactory fossa, we visualized an extracerebral tumor clearly separate from the brain matter. The tumor was not fixed to arachnoid membranes of the brain and skull base. There was no connection of the tumor with dura matter of anterior cranial fossa base and falx of the brain. The tumor lay freely on the left parts of the olfactory fossa and posteriorly passed into the intact olfactory nerve. The tumor macroscopically resembled schwannoma. Histological exam examination, um, uh, schwannoma grade one. Immunohistochemical study revealed positive reaction of the tumor cells with the antibodies. Key 67 index was focally up to 1 to 2. MRI postoperative, we are looking at postoperative MRI images. We can see that there is no tumor left. Uh, we are looking at uh, postoperative MRI, which contrast en enhancement. We, we don't see the accumulation uh, of contrast agent. Uh, uh, here we can see the compression before our, and after surgery, the result gross total resection.
MRI images uh, follow up was two years. We are looking at MRI images two years after the surgery. We can see that there is not recurrent. Now I will tell about uh, literature review. The authors of the, these articles, after analyzed the material, came to the conclusion that uh, olfactory nerve schwannoma is extremely rare. At the time uh, of publication, 67 have been described in the literature. This article tells that uh, olfactory nerve has no Schwann's cells and origin of the olfactory nerve is still controversial. One possible mechanism of the growth for, from the aberrant Schwann's cells is the central nervous system. The authors of the, this article testify to transmission of the mesenchymal PL cells into the ectodermal Schwann cells. Japanese authors, authors of the, this article, after analyzing the material, come to the conclusion that a suprarenal schwannoma can be developed from meningeal branch of the trigeminal nerve or anterior ethmoid nerve. Uh, some authors argue that olfactory nerve contains Schwann cells. Uh, derived from prognathian cells that are present of the olfactory epithelium. Authors uh, report that growth of the schwannoma can occur from olfactory filaments, embryotic terminal nerve, nerve plexus on the meningeal vessels of the stem cells of the olfactory nerve and bulb. Uh, some authors came to the same conclusion. Uh, the same authors tell there is not uh, another theory which uh, uh, includes development of the schwannosis and reactive change following stroke and the multiple sclerosis. In uh, 2012, uh, the same author uh, analyzed uh, 45 patients with olfactory schwannoma. Mean age of the patient was 33 years. Men to women ratio uh, 1 to 5. Uh, Relate to the location of the lesion. Uh, Common uh, symptoms were headache, impairedness, smelling, cognitive disorders, seizure, and visual disturbances. Uh, the differential diagnosis. The authors uh, tell MRI data always require differential diagnosis of the tumor of the anterior cranial fossa with other lesion in this area. Uh, olfactory schwannoma and olfactory groove meningioma has similar neuroimaging uh, features such as peripheral edema, contrast enhancement, and calcification. Hyperostosis and anterior cranial fossa can be observed in the patient with meningioma. Uh, more severe skull base destruction with invasion into parental sinus occurs in the esthesioneuroblastoma, ethmoid bone carcinomas, lymphomas, and metastasis. On the contrary, there is hyperostosis and bone destruction on the case olfactory schwannoma. Therefore, on the absence, these signs can indicate in favor of schwannoma. Complication. Nasal CSF leakage is the most uh, common postoperative complication. complication. Uh, prognosis. Uh, surgical resection is uh, preferred in the, this lesion and favorable prognosis with minimal risk of recurrence is possible after total resection. Conclusion. Olfactory suprantal schwannoma is a very rare benign tumor arising from olfactory nerve. At present, there are no literature data on the relapse on the tumors. The risk of recurrence is unlikely after total resection. However, further analysis 
of this lesion and longer time postoperative follow-up data is needed. This topic and case very read and there are not so many publications is world leadership, but if you want to know more about olfactory schwannoma, we have publication article in the public domain. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Agadadash, for the presentation and for this uh, case. Uh, I have one question. Uh, what do you do to prevent the CSF leak? Uh, you use implant or do you use autograft uh, while closing the dura? Or uh... About CSF leakage, I, um, I think about uh, this localization because mm -hmm. this uh, this tumor local localized uh, similar uh, olfactory gross meningioma if you uh, if you do total resection maybe you uh, have a risk about uh, CSF leakage uh, nasal CSF leakage and uh, every time uh, when you when do you resection these tumors? Uh, you very carefully uh, need uh, 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 closet uh, uh, cell base, maybe uh, maybe a fat, maybe mm -hmm. uh, so it can be autograph or autograph. Yes, mm -hmm. autograph. Yes, autograph. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I want to mention that uh, Dr. Agadadash Kasimov works in the Federal Neurosurgical Center, uh, one of the biggest center in Russia, where they perform a lot of surgeries and per year, uh, if uh, I'm wrong, maybe more than a thousand of tumor cases you take in your neuro-oncological department. So uh, per day routinely that can be done around three or four cases, uh, which is uh, transnasal endoscopic, uh, microsurgical, and uh, you have also exoscope, as I know, right? Yes, but uh, all uh, cases I use open surgery. I didn't uh, use uh, transnasal surgery. Yeah, you, because... you have your own uh, another consultant. Dr. Ekaterina Garmalisova. Yes, Katerina Garmalisova. Yes, we have three doctors who who did that surgery. Dr. Garmalisova, Dr. Evgeny Galushka, and Dr. Abdilatipov. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? Thank you for literature review. It's actually also important uh, because uh, I think sometimes you have to go to more, uh, as I mentioned before, to more details to find maybe someone will give you the answer in that article, not only books, but articles. Thank you. Thank you, Nargiza. Thank you, uh, John. Uh... Uh, I hope in future I will present it, I will present uh, the uh, surgery uh, report about mm -hmm. my experience. Yes, uh, we already uh, put you to list. Uh, so 12th of December or 10th of December, you are going to present and we are uh, looking forward to listen to your presentation. Great. Thanks Thank everybody for participating. And uh, put it together, Narvita, Narkiva. Um, I'd like to, uh, Myla, can you say a, a bit about what you're going to broadcast uh, in in Russian on Wednesday, correct? My, Mila, are you there? Yes, I'm yeah, here. Well, Sorry, my tablet is just charging. Yes, my name is Dr. Mila Mangi, and I will be presenting Cherapna Mazgava Travma, Naruska Music K. Inshallah, on Wednesday, that is going to be the 25th of October, Sreda. Can, so, you, share, can you share the banner? Uh, do you have the banner? Yeah. There? Uh, it's not completely ready, but I can just like share my screen just so like everyone can get an idea. 
Yeah, just so they um, say it's real. Yes. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is part of the banner that I'm trying to just organize. Chronic brain injury in Russian. Yes. Uh, it says it on the top, Naruska Music K. So okay. I'd be really grateful if any of the Russian neurosurgeons they can join, correct any of my mistakes. That would be amazing. Well, you, 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 yeah, it's it's interactive, uh, and it's and it's aimed at the medical student that likes neurosurgery and the young neurosurgical resident. Correct, Mila. Yes, uh, the students at this university, Kabardino Balkarian State University in Nalchik. And where I previously used to live in Dagestan State Medical University in Makhachkala, Dagestan, all of them attend. They're very excited. So I think it's a good start. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, no very good. Uh, one, more, one more announcement. 29 of October, we are going to have uh, neurosurgical grand rounds, Russian neurosurgical grand rounds, where Dr. Sinko, uh, from Moscow, uh, cerebral vascular neurosurgeon is going to present about posterior uh, cerebral aneurysms. So please do join. We will uh, try to send uh, the announcement prior at least four days. Uh, so sorry, this uh, announcement has been sent late because of some issues. That's but okay. That's okay. Don't worry about the, that. The link no problem. Sending, no, the link we will be sending before four days. So we are new and we are improving so thank you everyone for attending thank you professor i thank you dr andrei Dubovoy, uh, for your help support <laughs> okay thanks everybody thank you all the professors thank you, thank you dr john thank you dr nagiza